Hello, and welcome to a Mixed Systems episode of the Drywall Podcast. I am your host, Nick Harmon. With us today, Danny Carrillo, right from here in Albuquerque. Danny and I quickly jump into the deep end talking about ice baths, but Danny is the quintessential expert when it comes to various plaster mediums for both interiors and exteriors. We discuss his journey into the plaster industry, becoming general manager of El Presidio Plastering and eventually taking over the company. His career may have paused though, when he lost a million dollars? So you had three companies that for whatever reason didn't pay, you didn't get paid, and you lost a million dollars and that just crippled you. It crippled me. So, you know, I didn't file bankruptcy. I did the best to pay off everything I could. And people didn't hound me because I pay my bills for 30 years. And you're a good guy. You're a good guy. I don't know about that, but I paid my bills for 30 years. They had made money. So it kind of just went away. So I'm sitting there. I had to close it down, let everybody go, finish the jobs up. And... um, sitting there looking out in my yard and I got all this scaffold, all these pumps. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> this is what I do. So I Danny start, has I, a moment. Danny has a moment of reflection after losing a million. I'm so, like, I'm sitting here looking at my empire that's crumbled to the ground and I'm thinking to myself, what am I gonna do? So I, Danny and I have known each other for a long time, but I feel like this interview solidified our friendship. We talk about his 28 page book entitled how to hire a contractor his ability to fly airplanes and his current company armor tone finishes all crammed into this amazing one hour podcast shout out to can-am tools for sponsoring the drywall podcast in the month of november this is the third month that can-am has sponsored us and we appreciate them for that This is no ordinary month of sponsorship. We'll be giving out some amazing Can-Am tools after every single episode in the month of November. Head on over to our Instagram page and like the Drywall Podcast page and then be on the lookout for posts mentioning this particular giveaway and follow the instructions. We'll be asking you to tag a friend and also mention in the comments what you enjoy about the podcast. This week, we will be giving away, after this podcast airs, a NICOR painter and contractor's kit, some awesome three ways, and also another hat. Head over to Instagram for details. Tune in to the Drywall Podcast every Friday for new exciting episodes we have with drywall professionals and professionals in the industry just like you. But for now, Danny Carrillo from Armor Tone Finishes and also from right here in Albuquerque on the 71st episode of the Drywall Podcast. Let's get into it. It's today. It's opposite. Uh, Tuesday here in Albuquerque, New Mexico with Danny Carrillo of Armor Tone Finishes on the Drywall Podcast. Welcome. Thanks. Live, a special live episode of the Drywall Podcast. We haven't done too many of these. Background story about Danny. I met you at L&W. You were giving a presentation on your, one of your spray systems at L&W. We struck up a conversation and we started talking about things that should not be named on this podcast. And I liked you instantly. One of them being ice baths. You were in ice, well, I don't know if you had done ice baths. No, I haven't done ice baths, but I take a cold shower every morning. I jump in, turn on the water full blast, both hot and cold, and I sit in there for 45 seconds till it warms up. Okay. It's kind of a mini high ice bath. Ice yeah. bath. Not what you're doing. So Nick no. took Nick took me out to one of his <laughs> ice baths up in the mountain last last winter <laughs> and uh, broke the ice on the pool and we jump in and right. uh, <laughs> it was supposed to be four minutes. I think I lasted about two and a half and uh, it, it's no joke. And this guy does this every day. I do still do them every day. I have a little pool at my house now uh, and 
one of the recent benefits of the ice bath, uh, I went to get my eyes because I busted my glasses during a soccer game. And one thing I do when I'm sitting in the bath is I put my face in the water for periods of time. I go close my eyes and hold my breath and put my face in the water throughout the ice bath. And the lady, the optometrist who was looking at my eyes in my recent visit, my vision had gotten better. And I was like, could that have been from the ice bath? And she does cryotherapy. Okay. And she's like, absolutely, because it stimulates the blood vessels. And you have all these blood vessels in your eyes. So I'm blind in one eye from an injury. Will it, <laughs> will it help me out? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Right. But it might, might make your other eye better. And it's there's a prefla of other health benefits to doing the ice bath. The end result being that I do ice baths because I'm just called to. They are very hard. Just hyper beneficial. They're really cool. I, I don't know, you know, I don't think they're for everybody, but I think if you do an ice bath and you really like it, you should look into it. You know, do, do it at a friend's house or get used to it. A good way that Wim Hof talks about is doing a 30 seconds in the shower. That is extremely beneficial, by the way. If you do that daily, extremely beneficial. So that's a really good starting point. Well, I feel like it jump starts me in the morning. You yeah. Know, you, you can put a little cold water on your face. That kind of wakes you up. But if you actually immerse yourself yeah. in, in the cold water, yeah. it, it jump starts you. And I've done the Cairo, uh, cryo, cryo, cryogenics, yeah. and uh, that isn't as hard as the ice bath. The ice bath is no joke. I mean, it'll, yeah. it'll take your breath away. That's what it did with me. It basically yeah, virtually took my breath away. I don't think so. people know what they're getting into. And I think if you would have waited, it would have been different. But Danny jumped right in. He was excited about it. But if, you, if, you kinda, if you're with somebody and you watch them do it, it kind of it takes away like it's like oh they're doing it I can do it you know type of type of element to it but they're they're tough I don't think people realize they're it's a uh, it's a mental as well as a physical uh, workout really for four minutes but whatever I didn't have Danny on the show to talk about ice baths although I do love the topic um, we were outside of L and W here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Danny, it, li you live in Albuquerque. Currently. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Tucson, but I came okay. to college out in New Mexico and been here pretty much ever since. So okay, look, college, college. Uh -huh. No, <laughs> so, we we don't have educated people on the podcast. I'm oh, sorry. sure you do. We're gonna have to cut this short. Sure you do. <laughs> there are a, lot, a lot of educated people out there that uh, choose not to work in the profession that they went to school for. Right, and that happens to be yes. me. So yes, okay. And so, so, what did you study at school? Just out of curiosity. So. So I'm a petroleum engineer by schooling. Weird. Petroleum Drilling engineer, engineer which I actually okay. did for a few years out of college. Drilling engineer. What you did know? you want to do with that type of degree? Well, I knew I wanted to be an engineer, and at the time, you know, in high school, you say, okay, what's the highest paying engineer? <laughs> so I picked petroleum. Okay. It was only a state over in New Mexico. Okay. Um, so it was fairly close to home, but I was still away for college. I okay. ended up in a little town called Socorro, yeah. New Mexico, yeah. 5,000 people. Yeah, just south so. of Albuquerque, if you look at it on a map. Uh, so, petroleum engineering. So you did petroleum engineering for a short period of time. Yeah. Did you for, make good money? For about, oh, it was great money, about three years. and. And, uh, but the calling, so I, back to the plastering, I'm, I started plastering or, or as a laborer at 15 years old in the summers. Oh, okay. So Feed, you had Feeding a Tommy gun. You had plaster knowledge prior to going to college. Right. Okay. Right. And so I, in the Was summer. Was your dad like a plaster guy? No, just, just a, a high school buddy of mine, Louis Robinson, got this job with a neighbor and okay. one summer and the next summer I joined him. Okay. And the rest is kind of history. Been, been in it ever since. Started feeding a Tommy gun at 15, which is basically shoveling a semi load of sand and a few pallets of material by yourself into a mixer all day long, okay. while, while the while the machine just sucks it down as fast as you can mix it. So it's plaster. It, and so, what type of plastering so, does this particular type of plastering have a name? It's stucco, basically exterior stucco. It's exterior. Stucco. So it's a big trailer pump. Okay. Um, with a lot of pressure, they're no joke. They'll they'll hurt yeah. you if you're not careful with them. And we're pumping up. You know, I pumped up as high as 10, 12 stories. And okay. And to to give a little bit of background, Danny is an expert with spray and like a different system type uh, processes, which is going to be interesting to our dry drywall community. Hopefully, it's interesting to me. You're still working with mediums. Um, We'll get back to the story. How familiar are you with drywall? 
like 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 your standard nuts and bolts hang finish texture like that how how where are we at there have you done a lot of it don't know too so, much about it it's fine so i haven't done a ton of it but being in okay. you know a contractor for 30 years you're, yeah. you're around it all the time yeah and then in our area in santa fe and albuquerque we do a lot of interior plaster so there's a lot of mixed systems that utilize drywall as a base and then plaster as a uh, topping and or complete plaster system inside okay. so so they kind of meld together you know i <clears throat> i work with a lot of drywall contractors and in the realm that I'm in now, sure, work with quite a few drywall contractors. You're, so I'm very familiar with the okay. with the levels and the systems and whatnot. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, cool, cool. Because this is the drywall podcast, and we want to vet everybody that comes on here. We don't want any, we don't want any fake uh, wannabe drywallers on the show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're marketing to drywall dudes a little bit with Armor Tone, and we'll we'll get into that a little later. Um, yeah? Yeah, that's primarily our, our audience. Okay. Although it's plasters and drywallers. Wait a second. There's still plasters in There are around? still plasters, believe it or not. <laughs> They're getting old. These old dinosaurs they, walking around. They're all crippled. I think the average age of a union <laughs> plaster is, is in the late 40s or early 50s, which means for every young guy, you got a guy in his 70s. Yeah. Which is kind of scary. So yeah. they're losing the trade, but you know, the, the unions trade. are doing a great job of, of bringing young okay. guys in. Okay. But yeah, so it, but it is a dying art. There's still a union plastering uh, tr uh, division, like plasters union. Correct. There okay. is. And uh, it's not as prolific in some areas as it is in others. Some yeah. areas it's all. I remember, really I remember when I was in the union up in Portland, Oregon, we were doing a job. And there was a couple of dudes that were putting on this material and I was like, oh, what's that? That's kind of cool. I was this lowly apprentice, you know, 50% <laughs> apprentice. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I remember the drywall guy specifically saying, those are the real artists, like, you know, the plaster guys. And I was like, oh, interesting. And I just filed that away for later. But um, there was like two dudes and yeah, they were old dinosaurs back then. And they were like, it's like, you see them in the wild. It's like, Ooh, what is that animal over there? And it's like, don't talk to those guys. They're plaster guys. They're like, you know, don't bother them in their natural habitat. <laughs> um, so going back to the story, you're doing plastering, uh, as a, as a young kid. Man. Yeah. As a kid, you know, summer's high school and a couple summers in college okay so i'm doing plastering and right. then, uh end up later in the summers doing the drilling thing uh, okay. in college okay um but still you know had plaster had the plaster background sure i uh, wasn't quite a plaster at the, well i'm still not a plaster yeah my brother's I have two brothers who are plasters, and uh, they say I'm not a plaster. Right. But Most plasters will say that anyone other than themselves is not a plaster. <laughs> That's but, pretty standard. <laughs> right, their, their saying is uh, anybody can do something for 10 minutes and look like a professional. <laughs> I like that. And so, who's your, wait, who's your bros? <clears throat> so I have a brother, Albert Carrillo, my older brother. And, and one of the bros is kind of, he's like a who's who or something, right? Yeah, he's, Albert is out in L.A. He is the... Uh, CEO of the Western Walls and Ceilings Association, which it's a union organization of contractors that work together to, you know, better the industry and uh, keep the union going. It's all union contractors. Okay, so he can't watch this. He's Why too that? high up. He's oh no, he'll up. watch it. He, you know what? <laughs> he he. Uh, <laughs> Although when I was at the World of Concrete, he wouldn't help me because he didn't want to ruin his manicure. But right. he's right. had mud under his okay. fingernails for a All long right. time. I like that. A little <laughs> rasin for Brother Albert. Oh, yeah. I we, like it. We, I was in the weeds at World of Concrete. Didn't have any help. I do demos there Okay. every year. And I said, hey, I got a Tyvek suit. And he says, no, nope, I ruined my manicure. And uh, he, he vacated. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'll watch, bro. I'll watch. But... Uh, I watch from my throne up here. <laughs> so, so we got nothing. Albert in LA, uh, CEO of Western Walls and Ceilings. What's that really quick? Western Walls and Ceilings Association. Association. What is that? So it's a contract. WWCA. WWCCA. Well, Western Walls and Ceilings Contractors Association. Okay. So it's drywallers, plasters, anybody building walls and ceilings, basically. Cool. Cool. All, all union. Okay. And uh, it's a great organization. They, they get together and, and uh, 
they all get along, which is kind of nice, right? Yeah, so you for get sure. competitors that all get in the same room to help the industry. And, uh, you know, Albert having been a, a plaster his whole life, and, okay. you know, he, uh, he fits right in. Yeah. He does well with him. Yeah. How, how did so, he get into that sort of uh, higher echelon of this industry? So, real quick, um, I got another buddy of ours out of high school into plastering, and then there's Albert's best friend. Got okay. Albert into it when he was about 19 or 20. Okay. So, he had, he had gone to college for a little bit, and he said, you know, I want to do something else. He got into plastering. Um, then, as I moved to New Mexico, and opened a plastering company, I grabbed him and I brought him out and he was my top guy for, for yeah, years yeah. out here. And, and plus he's uh, well connected as well. Well now he is. Now he is. But then he went to work for Drive It, okay. which is exterior insulation system, yeah, yeah. finish system. Yeah, eight. I read some of, did you listen to Buck Buchanan's podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, he, I started reading his, his book. I was going to do the entire audio book and he wanted me to do a different book, but it's about the history of EI. EIFS or EIFS. EIFS. I, I hear it said so many different ways. Well, if you say EIFS and you're not a true plaster, you'll get slapped around. Oh. Or you say, I'm sorry, if you say EIFS. 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 Yeah, you're not a, you're not a. Maybe I was don't, saying. You don't say. <laughs> but anyway, it's EIFS. called, in the industry, it's called EIFS. EIFS. Okay. So anyway, um, but uh, so Albert worked for Drive It for 18 years. Okay. As an area manager okay. in sales. And, uh, you know, he's the kind of guy that could jump on the job, grab tools out of a guy's hand, show him how to do it without getting a drop on his shoes. Right, right. Just a true professional. Very cool. And so, then and not, to, um, <clears throat> not to hang out on Albert too long, you have one other brother. Yeah, so... Don't, like, you guys don't talk about him. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we have brother Victor, who's nine, Victor. Years, nine years younger. He's oh, actually cool. a, a fireman. In Albuquerque. In Albuquerque. Those, he's in Albuquerque. He's in Albuquerque. He came out and worked for me too. All right. And then he got into the fire department with a bunch of buddies at the age of like 35. So he got in late. But, you know, those guys worked two 48 hour, two 24 hour shifts. They worked 48 hours a week. And so he still plays in the plaster world. Okay. And he helps me out in, in Armor Tone. And okay. So he's still, he's, he's a plaster. Very And cool. he still does it. Okay, so it's like a family affair for you guys. You you all stumbled into this sort of trade. You're a you're a uh, you know a cousin or a you know a brother tradesman. You know plaster uh, versus drywall, but it's yeah, it's all in the walls realm. So um, Albert's yeah, son, about. Albert's son Nick, <laughs> okay. who also worked for me at Great one name. point. Great name, Nick Carrillo. He's yeah. uh, the VP of Albert's organization. So he's worked, okay. he's worked, he started feeding the pump in high school as cool. a kid. Cool, You know, just like we all, we all started feeding the pump. Yeah. And that's important and so, too, knowing your trade, I think to push products in this space, uh, I, I feel like being an expert in your realm is very important. Like you can't just sort of go shoot from the hip. Me knowing how to do fresco harmony is and further, me knowing how to do drywall, being a journeyman drywaller, is hugely beneficial to selling a product. It's almost like a necessary evil to, like, because people are going to vet you immediately. You oh, know? yeah. It's almost cheating. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it is because, almost cheating. Because you're walking in with the knowledge. And, and, you know, my story is when I walk in and sell either equipment or material to a guy, I say, look, <clears throat> I fed my family doing this for 30 years. Okay. So I'm not going to sell you something that's not going to work, number one, okay. or that I really haven't done or I'm not an expert in. I'm not going to try and sell you something like that. Right, right. And But so, they'll know. They know anyway. Oh, yeah. So yeah. When, when you, you walk in. When like, you jump in, you get a They hook. vet you real quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they'll test you. But, you know, I do a lot of training. I sell pumps and then I go train on the pumps um, nationwide. Okay. You know, because a plaster pump, it, it's dangerous. Okay. You know, it's up to 600 to 2,000 pounds, and it'll hurt you. Okay. And so a guy going from hand application to pump application, um, I want to help those guys out because I can, I can get them through the pitfalls in a day that might take them several weeks to learn, and they might hurt somebody learning. Okay. So, that, so I train. Okay. And, I, and it works out And you're a, sal well. you're a salesman. You're, you're, you know, I mean, you're a good salesman. Well... There's no shame. That's right. No you know, shame you in did, it, Danny. if you if you, <laughs> I'm, I'm if you know <laughs> if you know what you're selling, yeah, it's, it, it's easy. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, well, I think I, I think sales more 
more, I say sales as a badge of honor in that I, I, I'm not a snake oil salesman. I don't cold call. I'm not that type of guy. But I think if you believe in what you're doing, it's not sales. You're having conversations and you're you're uh, enrolling you're enrolling your customer into what you're talking about by being authentic and believing in what you're selling that's right. the key and, and you don't need a script you don't need to come in with a piece of paper or do a powerpoint no. you can just rattle it off the top of your head yeah. and when if, you if when we you, were if i was using a script here and i had a list of questions it wouldn't be as cool of an interview i think we have to stay on track but i think the beauty of life and good content on social media is authenticity in other words that's what i'm talking about Right, talking with real, having a real conversation with real <clears throat> right. people. Um, so. so, going back to the story, you got uh, you got plaster in your blood, you got plaster in your family for one reason or another. Uh, this industry has enveloped you as a family, and uh, brother Albert is high up, and uh, brother Victor is also uh, he's done it for years, became a fireman. Uh, shout out to Victor for that. Going back to post college, now where does Danny go from here? What is your next step? Maybe you're like, yeah, do the pump for a little while, and you're like, I'm making good money, but this sucks. I'm gonna go back to plaster. Is that what? Well, so I, <clears throat> I'm working as a, as a drilling engineer in the industry in okay. South Texas for three years, and uh, my buddies from Tucson, who I had worked for contractors said, hey, we're going to open an office in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, <clears throat> we need somebody to take the test for us, the contractor's test. Okay. So I had enough experience under my belt to be able to take the test, so I went and took the test and passed it. Like to be a that, certified contractor? To be a certified plastering contractor. Okay. So then I hit them up. I said, now what are you guys going to do? And they said, well, we're going to hire a general manager and we're going to open up an office out there. Okay. And I said, you just hired him. Yeah. And they said, what? I said, well, <laughs> I don't like not, drilling. I, I love <laughs> drilling, but the money's good. But I want to live in New Mexico. Uh, and I was traveling seven days on, seven days off. And, oh, so you're traveling. You know, that's eventually going to get you. <laughs> that seven days on, seven days And your days peeps off. are here and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, what was the name of that company? It was called, uh, it started out as um, El Presidio Enterprises, but then it became uh, Presidio Plastering right away. And it, it's two guys, two contractors, Wayne Sharp and Mike McAuliffe out of Tucson, got together and created this company. Okay. And so I worked for them as their general manager, started with a mixer and a pickup truck. Yeah. And popped onto a Taco Bell that was being framed and got it and went and did it. <laughs> so, and okay. then it turned out. And you were doing just interior plaster. Ex, no, this is exterior stucco. This stuck is up. exterior stucco. Exterior stucco. You say plaster, and also we just interviewed that plastering girl from Auckland, New Zealand. They call drywall plaster in Auckland. So, just to just to keep it clear for our listeners, plaster is a very is a vague terminology for many different systems. It can be right. It can be interior, exterior. Okay. You know, a lot of things. Okay. Um, oh, you're talking about specifically. You're using eaves, if I dare. I do use I do use eaves. I have used a lot of eaves. Okay, you know. but you've used different types of stuff. I've used stow. And... Yeah, I use stow, drive it. Okay, you know, okay. The El Rey, Parex, you know, the, okay. all all the brands. There's a I stayed of... friends with all of them because they all brought me work when I was a contractor. Sure. I, so it's, sure. Okay, but so no I've loyalty. They're kind of like drywall. These drywall guys will have loyalty to certain muds. They'll get on with like USG or you know. Um, <clears throat> Hamiltons or whatever and they will like dig in and that's the only mud they'll ever use they're very stubborn they rarely change from mud to mud whereas stucco it seems like maybe you would drift a little more well some work better than others sure. no doubt I had my favorites okay but if somebody's gonna bring me a job why wouldn't I use their material oh so, interesting. so, so like the stucco a, companies stucco are, they're more yeah, they're more invested in bringing the contractor work to sell the product. They're, they're interested in selling product. And if they get a close spec on something that they're the only ones listed in the specification on a job, <sighs> okay. then they're going to, and if they gave it to me, we did everything by the book. Um, so, you know, we tried, we did everything by the book. If it's wintertime, we're wrapping in heating, we're adding material. Uh, 
admixtures to our material so it doesn't freeze. So, okay. you know, we're trying to do everything right. Okay. So a manufacturer bring it to me, number one, I never dickered on price. If you bring me a job, you charge me whatever you want for it because let's all make some money, right? Okay. And then I'll, you're bringing me this job that I didn't already have. Smart. So charge me whatever, you, I'm not gonna beat you up on price and I'm gonna go do this thing, you just give it to me when you don't have to worry about it, it's done. That's so, that's smart uh, networking mar uh, marketing. That's smart business uh, relationship. Right, building. I, I don't like to beat it up beat up people on price. Just like I don't get like to get beat up on price. I like yeah. to show yeah. them the value of what I'm selling them, as opposed to price. Because you know you you can take that all the way down to the toilet and price and. You know why are we here? We're here to make money. We're here to feed our family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You're, you're not going to gouge anybody, but by the same token, you know, don't race to the bottom. Yeah, price does be become a factor with plastering systems. We'll get into that, but like armored tone systems, you know, finishing systems where you're battling price point, the uh, how the wall looks, and paint and texture. So it does start becoming a factor because we've been stuck with paint and texture for years and years and years and we're now just now getting into these maybe new systems that are maybe more beautiful and also cost effective because plaster is so extremely high you know, which is why it's a dying trade am I wrong I mean, right yeah, so, so price does become a factor in that realm in that realm so We'll talk about Arbortone when okay. we get to it. But. Yeah, but stucco. Uh, so you're 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 generating relationships with these stucco companies. Yeah. So I ended up with you know seventy five employees. And, Jesus. And you know working in three and four states. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So you Fun. built uh, El Presidio plastering. Or Presidio plastering. Well, I built it up to seventy five employees, and Good then I bought them out. Um, I had an estimator and. Her family was Why in construction. You right now, Danny. How come you don't let you get a you house know what? on the so, hill? You got the house on the hill. You dri he's driving a he's driving a, a Lamborghini, which uh, is weird. No. You can't carry much uh, stucco in the Lambo. So I did my buck <laughs> I did my bucket list backwards, Nick. Okay. All right. So All right. I, as a young man, I Let's flew. Let's dig in. Let's I, dig in. I, this is where the podcast <laughs> gets interesting. Okay, you've got a huge company, seventy-five employees. You buy your bros out. You're like, I'm going to take this to the moon. <laughs> then the economy crashes or you get divorced or something. Well, <laughs> all of it, all three. <laughs> I, wasn't paid a, I wasn't paid a million dollars in 2010. Okay. Almost a million dollars on three, three jobs. Okay. In, in completed work. Okay. okay. It was in, oh, you were It was completed paid. work and was not paid a million dollars. This is the double-edged sword of commercial, of large commercial yeah. contracts. You're not just, it's like the GC's not holding back a couple hundred bucks of uh, patches that you did. It's like, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's life changing. It's life changing. <laughs> Company's like, hey, sorry about that 500K. Yeah. We're like, we're going bankrupt. But before that, I was. I had my pilot license. I was flying to all my jobs. Okay. You know, checking my jobs. Shut I was up. going on vacation where I wanted to go. You were flying had, had, to your yeah. own jobs. <laughs> had, had, had the motorcycle, had the Porsche. Not a new Porsche, but I had the Porsche. Can we please get, yeah. for, so, the, for the sake of the podcast, can we please get a picture or some video of you flying to a job in your airplane? Do you, you have know, I, any footage of that? I don't know if I do or not. Oh my God! So, man. but, uh, but you, you know, might be the first certified pilot that we've had on the show. I, I got like 550 hours. I didn't know that. Yeah, so That's cool. It, so it's fun. So I flew to these jobs. So anyway, so I did all this fun stuff, owned bars, and did all kinds of crazy okay. stuff while I was contracting. Sure. Up, you know, to the age of you know, in my early 50s, and then, holy crap, I got to go to work for somebody because. <laughs> I'd lost a million bucks. You take a million bucks out of a company. I don't care. You know, it's a four million dollar company a year. You take a million bucks out. You're it's so you done. had three companies that, for whatever reason, didn't pay. You didn't get paid, and you lost a million dollars, and that just crippled you. It crippled me. So okay. it, you know, I didn't file bankruptcy. I did the best to pay off everything I could, and okay. people didn't hound me because. I pay my bills for, and you're for good, 30 years. you're a good guy. Well, you're a good guy. I don't guy. know about that, but I paid my bills for 30 years. Yeah. They had made money. So it kind of just went away. So I'm sitting there. I had to close it down, let everybody go, finish the jobs up. And um, sitting there looking out in my yard, and I got all this scaffold, all these pumps. I'm like, Jesus, 
This is what I do. So I start, Danny has I, a moment. Danny has a moment of reflection after losing a million. I'm so, like, I'm sitting here looking at my empire that's crumbled to the ground, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I gonna do? So I, you know, I said, okay, we'll do it again. Well, yeah, we, of course. Yeah, of course. One of the guys we did took me for a bunch of money. He actually went to jail over it. But Good. anyway, Good. Um, you know, uh, my girlfriend at the time walked into his office and said, you know, this is going to sink our company. And he goes, ah, Danny's a smart guy. He'll do it again. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of condescending, right? I mean, Jesus. But through all this, I never lost a night's sleep over it. I'll is tell he you still why. in jail? Is the guy he, still no, in jail? No, he did 19 months. He was going to face 101 years, 19 months. He took... <sighs> That's like a he took millions that, of, that is a slap on the wrist. Yeah. You go sit in the can for 19 months, you're going to yeah. think about stuff a little bit. That's not nothing. But he took millions out of the job. Yeah. So anyway, so I didn't lose any sleep over it. Here's why. Okay. I had young kids at the time. They didn't take my kids. Right. They didn't take, I love it. And they didn't take my health. I love it. And they took a bunch of equipment, and I lost some properties and stuff. But you know what? They took your eye, though. No, the eye was... <laughs> I, 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 I. No, that was gone when I was 19, being stupid. Working on a car, I'd lost my okay. eye. Oh, yeah, you can land a plane with one eye. Sure, of course so. you can. Of course you can. You had to. You had I had to. to. So anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so I kind, of, I kind of did everything in reverse. So, you know, I have no regrets. You Interesting. Know, I, so you're sitting there. You're, sorry, you're staring out at the... You had a lot of equipment. You had, you had a lot of money tied up in your tools and equipment and stuff for, for I mean, running this vast empire, you know, um, which is what it is to somebody like me that has one employee, two employees. I mean, that just seems like a nightmare anyways. But uh, you're running this giant corporation and uh, it burns to the ground. Where does Danny go from there? So I said, OK, this is what I know. I got this equipment. So I started up again and uh, got up to you know, 10, 12 employees, things are going, I'm working with the guys every day. Okay. And uh, what are you changed doing? my what proposal. What are you doing at that point? Plus, still stucco and plaster work okay. and Venetian plaster, things like that. All right. But I changed my proposal, so you pay me third up front, a third when I'm half done, yeah. and a third when, I'm, which is unheard of in commercial construction. It's You it's, wait for your money. and It's too bad that you had to cross the bridge the way you do. And it's too bad about, because they do that shit in uh, residential as well. And it's like, why, why are we funding your project? Exactly. You got all the money. Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating. What am I, a bank? <laughs> you are. And then, and then when, when you get burned for a million dollars, it's like, oh, that just yeah. happened. Sorry, Danny's, well, Danny's smart. He'll figure it out. It's like, no, no, no. You know, and, and I mean, you could take that to your next business proposal where you're asking for this payment schedule that makes much more sense. I got to pay for materials. I got to pay for my guys. And I'm just saying this because this pisses me off about our industry. Right. I get it because there's a lot of shady contractors out there that are going to take the money, take that first third and run. Right. 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 And I get that. Sure. But. Yes. You know, actually, <laughs> I wrote a little book on how to hire a contractor. Okay. Just for that specific thing. Really? Only because homeowners getting raped by contractors yeah i mean literally mm -hmm. getting raped and yeah so I wrote contractors a give uh they'll give honest contractors a bad name and that this is what happens this right. is why people don't want to pay contractors but i think if there's an honest schedule where everybody's on the same page thirds or halves i get half up front you know, worst you're going to do is lose half your money. And I get half at the end of the job when you're satisfied. Right. And that's for a small job. Jobs over a certain amount, I will do thirds. You know, if it's over like 15K, we can do thirds or uh, develop a payment schedule that works for everybody. But not, I do the job and then you pay me if you like the job. Fuck that. We're well, in that, a relationship. That's the way it is in commercial. I mean, yeah. you're on, a, you're on, you bill every 30 days, but sometimes that pay doesn't come in for 60 or 90 days or... <laughs> government your retention you're the bank. last 10 percent, which yeah. is sometimes your profit yeah you're waiting on that for up to a year it's, uh. it's ridiculous all right well we but, don't wanna... but anyway so you, wait you wrote a book what's the name so of it's book? called how to hire a contractor it's 28 <laughs> pages but it's basically how to vet a contractor how to make sure he's insured how to pay them right you don't want to pay them 50 percent up front well if you do that give them a joint check 
let him go pay for his materials. How to make sure everything's paid. How to get a house that's done properly without a lien on it, basically. Where can I get a hold of this book? Oh, I have so some the, copies. Yeah, I have copies. It's only twenty-eight pages. Okay. And um, I've sold some online as an ebook, but I'm actually doing an audible on it right now. I have somebody rewriting it for an audible to do an audible book. Yeah. So, so I've been told it's got a lot of information in twenty-eight pages. I like to keep it simple. I want somebody to learn something sure. very quickly and be able to utilize it, right? So, okay. so 20, I sat at, at, uh, at a Starbucks one Saturday and wrote it. Okay. <laughs> in the morning. Beautiful. You know, just wrote it up, had it edited, printed it. Um, but I've been told that if you make it 300 pages, you'll get rich. And I could make it 300 pages, but you know what? You don't need to. You, know, you don't uh, need to make it That's kind of a long pages. shot. Did you hear my interview with uh, <clears throat> Myron Ferguson, that drywall guy? No, I didn't. I, it's pretty good. He sold 500,000 copies of uh, uh, drywall. Book? It's about drywall. Wow. It's the drywall handbook okay. by R Myron Ferguson. Uh, uh, Tottenham Press uh, took it on, and uh, he's all over, man. He sold 500,000 copies. They're still like selling, selling books, but he didn't. You'd think that it's this big, lucrative thing, but it's a very challenging route. Right. I, just, I, I really did it not to make money. But just, I hate seeing people getting taken advantage of like it's that. It's cool. It's very interesting. So, uh, so to our listen, listeners, if somebody was interested in getting a copy of How to Hire a Contractor by Danny Carrillo, where would they go? So, howtohireacontractor.com. Okay. So, try it there. Um, I, I need to see if that's up. I haven't sold okay. any in a while. Yeah. Um, I did a few on Amazon. I wrote this book, I don't know. Ten years ago, eight to ten years ago. If somebody was interested and they wanted a book and emailed me, would you be absolutely would you send them a book? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So if you email the drywall podcast info at frescoharmony.com, we'll we'll get you a book. Sounds interesting. I'm I'm definitely interested. I want to get a copy and read it now. And you know, this is stuff we all know as contractors because it's done to us on a continual basis. Sure. You know, check for insurance. They check our insurance. They yeah. only pay a certain amount. So basically, you're teaching a homeowner how to be a commercial owner and make sure the job's done right. Yeah, you're teaching so, them how to be a GC, but not so douchey. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, nah, come on. There's some good GCs out there. Without, there, without, there, G, without there. GCs, Nick, we wouldn't have anything. So we need those guys. Okay. A different so. animal, those GCs. Um, okay. Back to the story. Everything's burned down. You're looking at a fire sale, but you start building your business back up. Yeah. So I start building up and I'm going this 30%, 30%, 30%. Okay. And uh, slow, pay, slow pay starts to happen again. Now I'm pissed. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm thinking. Okay, well, how am I going to? Because these guys will get you on the hook. That's the thing. They'll get you on the hook, and then it's like, oh no, 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 no. We got this work. They're yeah. good at it. That's yeah. their whole job, man. So, so now I'm thinking. You know what? <clears throat> now it's going to affect my health because I'm going to have a heart attack, or I'm going to I'm going to walk in somebody's office and grab them by the neck. You know? Right. And so I I've said, seen I've... videos too on YouTube where the the contractor guys beating the shit out of like the the business owner, like <laughs> ripping them out of the truck and being like, I want my money. Yeah, it's our money. We work for it. We already paid our material. We paid our guy. That's Pay right. Pay us our money. That's right. So anyway, so this, uh, I heard uh, Albert called me and said that uh, he heard about a job at Graco, that they had a whole stucco and flooring pump division. Okay. Because I pump floors too. I got into that as well. Anything that pumps, basically, I've done. You love that so, shit. I, don't you? I just. It's I, so weird. You know, I want to make a video because I, I, I do a lot of videos on on YouTube for pumps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I want to make one with spitting out hundred dollar bills. I mean, you pay for these pumps in a couple days, and then you're making money with it. You know. Right. Yeah, I paid for a fifty-three thousand dollar floor pump in two days, and made money on the job in addition to that. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, so. So, um, so in Graco has this position available as a sales guy, and so I go interview for it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it worked out pretty good. I ended up starting in sales, and uh, ended up being the business development manager for that division okay. within a short time, and traveled the country and helped them grow the business. And that's what you, it, it seems like. That's kind of like what you like to do. Yeah, like, like, I, I like to help people make money. Running a business. Not so much, but like being like being a higher up and doing sales and like 
traveling around. That's, kind of, your, that's your bag. I like it. I, t- I like running a business too. You Actually, do. I'm a stress junkie. I yeah, miss I miss, the stre- I miss the stress of <clears throat> 75 guys got to be on six different jobs. How are you going to dole them out? I, okay. You know, I miss that. All right. I, I, I need stress. I, sure. I need to keep busy, man. I get yeah. distracted too easy. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so I need to Well, keep I busy. like how when I deal with you in our business dealings, I like how on it you are. You're very like on top of it. That's like, to me, that's a sign of a really good business person. My web guy too, who uh, handles <clears throat> my platform. Like I don't have GoDaddy or anything. I've got this dude in like Minnesota or whatever. He's fantastic. Like he's on it. And it's just so, I'm so appreciative when there's business owners like that, that take care of stuff quickly, you know, text back, you know, you're a text backer. Some people are not text backers. Well, you know, just like your dad raised you, you know, yeah. treat people like you want to be treated. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not rocket science, you know. It's cool. Just... So Graco, where do we go from there? So I worked five and a half years with Graco. Okay. And How old are you at this point? Uh, so I started 30? Gra- no, 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 no. I'm in my older. 50s. Yeah, I you've already I'm, built a company I'm in, and burned I'm it in, down. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm at 50, 55. You spent a lot of time with uh, Presidio. For 10 years. Okay. And then I bought them out. All right. And st- did my own for 20. Oh, okay. That was so called you were Ma- young. Mountain Shadows. You were young. I was 36 when I started on my own. 26 when I started with them. 36 when I started my own. And it burned down at? Uh, 40. No, 40. 50. Well, 50 something. 50 years old. Okay. At 50 years. Yeah. Feels old to like start over. You know what? <laughs> it's, it's all relative. It's I get all it. relative. I get it, man. You I'm know, 47. I, like, I'm, I'm like getting up there to where it's like, oh, age is weird. I don't understand it anymore. I'm going to be the guy they're going to have to kick out at 80. Okay. You know, you got to get in that ice bath, buddy. I'll give you a <laughs> few extra years. <laughs> I love work. I, I love working. I love building businesses and and doing different things. So, so anyway, so I go. So I'm working for them five and a half years. Okay. My buddy Rob Knight, who created Armor Tone, um, and Rob Knight very, is also in the book. Yeah, he's in Buck's he, book. Yeah, Rob, in Buck's Rob's book. a guru. He's actually the, yeah, he was he, is. he was the first stow distributor in the United States. Yeah, it was still in I mean, German. All the literature was still in German. Yeah, so he so he's been around. He's been around. So he, and then he created. Uh, he saw me doing a Venetian product out of Arizona at Sandia Casino. What uh, we product? Got, what product? It's, it's called that? Hopper Venetian Finishes. Uh, you know what's funny about Hopper is that Hopper what came up to Crested Butte when I was working with huh. Crested Butte, and they did their plaster up there. And I was asking about the plaster, and my boss in Crested Butte was like, "Don't let Nick on the job because he's gonna bug these guys." They would they were so secretive about everything. <laughs> oh yeah, and I, they were such dicks. And I was like, "Fuck that guy! I'm gonna go start a color joint compound system." <laughs> well, <laughs> but that was Hopper. Yeah, Hopper, and, and they they got specked on Sandia Casino with an architect out of Phoenix. Right? Okay. So through all the people I knew in Arizona and stuff, it was just a fit. So we okay. joint ventured that job. And then he okay. allowed me to buy his products to do stuff. Shout and I, out to Hopper Finishers for but, allowing Danny to but, buy your product. But you know what? <laughs> it was a great product, and they did okay. good marketing. All right. And, you know, we went and did uh, Abercrombie and Fitches around the country. Well, there's a lot of chains, you know, chain stores like that. Yeah. That do the specialty finishes in the malls, right, in the, in the outside think, and yeah. inside. The Cheesecake Factory has beautiful plastic. Yeah, cheesecake. You've cake. seen that, right? right? Yeah. It's like gorgeous in there. It's like, who the hell did this? It must have cost $100,000. Yeah, and like, some, you know, some Starbucks are doing it. They're starting to do more. So, okay. You know, the, but the Venetian plaster started really in the late 90s, early 2000s, and we happened to get in it at that time. So we were, I think we were the first ones in Albuquerque to do it. But okay. anyway, so okay. so Roth Knight came to me and he goes, man, I, I want to make a Venetian. What what look am I looking for? And I said, well, if you can get this basic look, I think you, you'll have it. And wasn't Rob's kid like working on it with him? No, or it was it was a guy named Micah Carroll. Who's, Micah, yeah. Micah, who's I've just like it. a guru in mixing mixing these formulas and getting okay. them on the wall, making them All look right. beautiful. And so he actually helped Rob develop it. And so Rob would bring me product when I was a contractor. I'd try it out. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful, you know. So he created the whole variance line. Yeah. Then Armor Tone. And so when I, he, he had this and he did a few things with it. He sold it and got it back. And, 
So anyway, now he has this armor tone. So while I was working with Graco, I was selling pumps that spray it. So I was helping him on demos and stuff like that. I was there selling the pump, but he was there selling his product. Okay. Well, then Rob. Rob was. Okay. Rob was. So Rob, Rob's great at, at, at marketing and developing these products, but okay. he's not a contractor. He's never, he's, you know, he's never actually done the work himself. Right. As a contractor, right. That's a detriment. To, so it that, worked that, out. Perfect. Just a detriment to him, but he had yeah. you so, or and Micah too. And, and Micah, and then my brother Victor would come and help at demos and stuff. And yeah. We we're just kind of, you know, helping each other out. Well, and variants did very well. Oh yeah, they, they're, still, their branding and marketing did good, and then Parex bought variants. They bought Armor Tone and variants. Okay. And then they weren't pushing the Armor Tone. So Armor Tone was alive and well during variants. Correct. It was a different division. Different division. Okay. And you were just you were like a, a research R and D person. Well, I was a contractor, and he'd bring stuff to me to try okay. out. And I'd say, well, it does this and it does that, but it needs to do this. And then they go tweak it. And so I just said, you know, Mike was real good at app applying as well, but he just wanted somebody else to try it just to see, okay. you know, how it worked on all the stuff I was working with. Yeah. And by then I was doing clay plasters and Venetian plasters. And Did you ever work with the American clay? I have. Yeah. yeah. And I've worked take with on, the, What's your take on that stuff? Um, beautiful product. Very natural. Yeah. Absorbs odors and feels very earthy. That's weird because I've heard like contractors say that they put it in their house and it stinks. Like their house has a musty smell. It smells like dirt. It is dirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I kind of like that. I kind of like Shout that. Shout out to American Clay. If you want your house to smell like dirt. <laughs> no, but it's not. A, it's an earthy smell. It is an earthy smell. Yeah. But I yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, you walk into. A I've house heard people say, well, durability is a factor, but, uh, you know, people can debate durability all day long. But the. Um, they like putting it on. They like the way it goes right. on. Like applicate pro applicators like the way it floats yeah. out. Well, and if you have if you're susceptible to to VOCs or chemicals and stuff like that, it's a great alternative, right? Because it's all natural. It's clay. Okay. And so it, don't it, they have it, to use binders and shit though in there? I don't think they do. It's a very soft product. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know the. Con I know the stuff I used to use out of uh, came from Amsterdam, I think. Could you run finishes? the sealer over the top of you, you can, American but, clay? Yeah, but then you lose all the earthiness of it. It still looks the same. And so I don't, so sorry. I, I don't Hopefully that, of, I, that eye roll does not translate <laughs> to audio. So it's a neat product. It has its place. It is okay. very soft, but it patches easy. And okay. they've done well. You know? And I like to, the Drywall Podcast, we try to be open. Uh, we try to be open about ideas, new ideas, and things like that. So you'll pardon my... Uh, my natural drywall instinct is to resist any and all new ideas that come at me. I like how open you are about like these different systems. It's very cool, uh, and and we'll get into like these new armor tone systems that you're like working on and developing. Good segue, but uh, you were a quintessential professional, and then what Rob Knight was bringing to you was. Uh, like all of these cool new finishes that you got to vet, so to speak. So that just really bolstered your ability to uh, use these different products right. and, and be they, an expert. And they're neat. You know, the products yeah. are neat and you they can make neat. more money on them. Yeah. The, you know, people pay a lot of money for interior interior plaster. The and right people. The right people. And, and we've done a lot of diamond finish, um, okay. which is gypsum plaster. That you smooth out so much, you know. We have a thing that flies can't land on it. It's so smooth. It, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. And yeah, it, and it's neat stuff. So, so we've done that, and we've done the molding plaster. Basically, anything in the plaster. What's molding? Plaster? Molding plaster. Like oh, take, like, like take. You've been. Have you been to the Lensic Theater? Yes. So they, they had a drop ceiling in there when they remodeled it. Okay. Pulled it out, and they had this beautiful ceiling in there that had gold leaf painting, and it was all molded plaster. Okay. Right, beautiful, and so about twenty-five or thirty percent of it was gone. So we made molds and replicated it, and got it back up to its original, and then painters from Chicago came out and hand gold leaf painted it. Cool, and it's cool. It's a neat job. That's like traditional fresco, where the paint then right. sort of seeps in. Do you know Frederico V Hill? I do not. You know, he did the the Torleone in actual fresco. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you seen the interior? No. Of the so Torleone? they did it over wet plaster. Yeah, lime. Oh, wow. Took him like four years. God. You know, when I moved to Albuquerque, that was part of my inspiration. 
the girl that I was seeing at the time took me to the Torreon, and the Torreon is, I don't know, it's a Spanish word for a large, round, cylindrical building that's like used to be out front of a Pueblo or okay. something where they like guard the Pueblo. Mm -hmm. it, um, but it's a round building, conical, and it goes up and it has a ceiling, probably two story with little you know, places where you can shoot out and protect your building or something. This dude, Frederico Vigil in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, he has also true frescoes up in Santa Fe in like the museum and stuff. He's a big fresco artist guy. He did the entire interior. Wow. In where, where traditional is fresco, the Spanish Cultural Center. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and it's I've been in there. I we went did, in there. We just redid a bunch of that diamond plaster. Because it looked like with, shit. You well, probably had to redo it. No, it, they had a roof leak. Yeah, but it, if you noticed, you can see all of the brake lines. I didn't like the way it looked. Well, now it's got armor tone on it, and it Good. looks a lot better. Go check it out. Okay. <laughs> the right. whole big dome, dome hallway, or the arch yeah, hallway. Yeah, I didn't like the plaster. I don't like it when the when you can see all the brake lines. I just think right. it's stupid. You and the, that, that's just application. That's application. You know, we, we know how to not do that. Yeah, but the uh, the Torleone, yeah, it's it's an entire. I saw him when he was doing it, and I got I like went in, and he was walking out, and he took me in and like gave me a, and told wow. told me all about it, and it was all he had he had all of the images outlined in charcoal, mm -hmm. and then he was doing like regular like, and he had like full respirator because of the lime, and he was using crushed up liquid pigments and stuff and. Wow! Painting the he painted the entire interior. I'm gonna have to go check that out. That's just yeah. chills down my spine. Yeah, you know it's fat. It, I mean, it's like Sistine Chapel shit. It took him like three or four years. Wow. Yeah, Pretty and that nice. inspired me back to the that inspired me to move to Albuquerque. I was like, oh, I gotta fucking come here because I just started doing fresco variants. That was 20 years ago. Variants was just coming out. Right. American clay was just coming out. I had no idea about these products. Yeah, so this is a plaster mecca just because of all the yeah. interior stuff up in yeah, Santa Fe and, so weird. and Taos. And it's yeah. pretty neat. It's, a yeah. neat. it's a neat place to be a contractor because you get to do so many different things. You know, you're gonna do a, a, a casino with Eves on the outside and yeah. Venetian on the inside, and then you're yeah. gonna go do a hospital with just Eves, and yeah. then you're gonna go do an Adobe clubhouse that's four thousand yards of stucco outside of an yeah. Adobe. Yeah. Then, then you're gonna do a clay plas I mean, a, not a clay, a straw bale house. Right, right. Right. And then you're gonna go up to Taos and put plaster on tires for the Earth ships. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And do interior and exterior. So yeah. it's just. It's a neat place to be a contractor because there's yeah. so many different realms of plaster. And then I was fortunate enough to to try it all and become good at it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I could be the guy, hey, we're doing this crazy, you ever done this crazy thing? Oh yeah, yeah we did this here, here, here. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of neat. It, I miss I miss the plastering part of it. I really do. Yeah, I, I do too. When you, when you get more into sales and marketing a product, you get, you start to get out of like the, the application. I like actually going and doing a wall or a, a room, you yeah. know, like doing it and just fuck life for a week. I'm gonna go in and like just work. You know, I miss that. I really do. Do you miss that? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. But I like the training aspect too. Actually, uh, right before I got a job with Graco, Rob used to call me about once a year. Hey, I got this job, so and so, I need to send somebody to train. So I'd send one of my plasters. He'd pay him and they'd go do it. Rio, Hawaii, you know, go show him how to do variants, right? Okay. And so he got this job in Kampala, Uganda. Four Crazy. or five, six story concrete buildings inside and out. Okay. He calls me up and he goes, hey, uh, I need one of your guys to go to Uganda. Yeah, or 10. And I says, um, <laughs> well, you're talking to him. You wanted to go I, to Uganda? I went to Uganda. Cool. And I trained 20 people how to apply plaster inside and outside what all great. variants finishes. So cool. The trip of a lifetime. Yeah. Just hard workers. Yeah. You know, this. Yes, yeah, so you're, ha you're hanging out with money. these dudes in Uganda like, Doing plaster. Yeah, it was neat. It was neat. So I, we got all the exterior done in two weeks okay. and trained them on the interior. Beautiful. It was crazy. It was day every day. We took one day off yeah. in, in the whole two weeks, but it was neat. And, uh, you know, I made some friends that I still talk to, you know, monthly on, on WhatsApp. And this was, you know, cool. seven, eight years ago. So cool. And so fast forward, some sort of division happens between Parex, Variants. Uh, Rob ends up getting Armor Tone. 
finishes, and that's when he brings you in as a full time partner. No, so he bring he bring I'm do, helping him out with the with the spraying and stuff, doing his demos okay. here and there. You know, selling pumps at the same time, right? Because I'm still working for Graco, and okay. then uh, and you still, Graco, you still work for Graco. No, well, no. Graco, <laughs> I was an employee of theirs, business development manager nationwide. Um, they moved me and my pumps to a new division, and I ended up with a boss that. Um, Wanted to know how many grains of rice I had on my dinner plate, <laughs> so I lasted uh, about six months. Yeah, and I, can, you know, I, I'm a grown man. I know how to do. I know how to do my job. You're yeah. not going to catch me slacking off. You're not going to keep catch me cheating on my expense report. You know, I, I do my job, and I, and I feel like I do it well. And if so, you don't trust this person to do your job, then you shouldn't have them around. You know, hire good people and get out of their way. Yeah. If you want to make money. Yeah. Right? And the boss I had before that, um, he was fantastic. I mean, okay. John Manning, he was great. He just let me go. Okay. He'd slap me around a little bit when I got out of, got out of my lane a little bit. Yeah. But, but it, it was never condescending. It was like, hey, okay. Danny, you know, kind of, it's a big yeah. corporation. We do it this way. Yeah. I know you used to run your own deal, but, you know, here's how we do it. So, okay. yeah, it was all good. So, you- so I got sideways with Graco. So um, I said, Rob, what are you going to do with this business? You, you know? called Rob? I said, what are you going to do with this business? Wait, and which business? This, this armor tone. Because he's doing it by himself, right? Okay. Working out of his house. And I so, said, I the, said, and the history there, he, he split up. I don't know all of the Parx bought armor tone and variants. And then he got He armor got armor tone back. back. Okay. And so, Rob, what are you going to do with this? And he goes, well, I'm going to get some investors and... And, uh, you know, make this thing grow, get it going again. And at that point, Rob just likes being in the game. Right. Yeah, he's been in it, it's, he's been in it forever. <laughs> he so just, He was like, boy, he sold variants, like he did well, right? Yeah, Selling he did really variants. Well. Yeah, his house is beautiful inside now. And yeah, then. and so, but I mean, I mean, it's like, just retire, dude, and go play golf or something. But he was like, he. this is like kind of like, it gets... It, it gets into your uh, into your blood, you right. know, like just keep doing it. It's, yeah. It's weird. So, so basically he says, yeah, I'm going to get an investor. And I said, well, what's that investor going to do? Well, he's going to give me money and I'm going to pay him back. So what if you had an investor that owned half the company and knows how to put it on the wall? Yeah. So I bought half of Armatone. Okay. Went all in, took everything I had. Really? And I just Balls put it on the deep. table. I love that, Danny. All like in at <laughs> 61 years, 62 years old. I like that. Right? I mean, everything. Why? Why? Because I believe in it. Okay. Right. But there's no gonna be- specifically. It's not just like I believe in a product. What about Armor Tone had Danny Carrillo at sixty one say, "I'm going all in on this product"? I just felt there was a. It's the growth is untapped. What it could be. What growth? What are the we growth of the about? selling the product nationwide? You know, worldwide. I just think that it's a great product. It saves people money, gives them a better end product. Okay, and, let's talk about it. How? Right. How does so, Armor Tone? How does Armor Tone? Uh, why is it so great? So Armor Tone, our our go to product, in my opinion. I mean, we have several products. We have trialed products, inside and outside. Okay. The shiny stuff. You know, we have all the pretty stuff as well. Yeah. <laughs> to get it. The blue. You've got Fresco Harmony Blue up there, which yeah. I really like. In in, in uh, Armor Tone, but. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, that stuff's pretty cool. It's beautiful, but it's three pails here, five pails there, some accent walls in a, okay. in a commercial building. Okay, so Nobody's going to do it in their whole house. You have the challenges of selling this the particular product, the same plaster challenges that you would have with like variants or any plaster product. Right, right. I'm talking specifically about what had you excited like... It seems like the spray applications, the volume applications of some of your Armor Tone products, that's kind of where I'm like, you've got some stuff that's pretty impressive. That like you right. go over existing surfaces, you can, you know, two coat. Like, let's talk about that a little bit. So basically, that's the product that gets me out of bed, right? Yeah. Because it's semi loads going out, not five pails here. Right. Because it's every wall in the building we do retirement homes hospitals facebook's you've got the built-in network of rob knight who like well he just knows everybody and and, like, and my know. own and my own and my yeah, brothers and yours and your brothers yeah <laughs> right? so yeah you've got you so you're established in in this industry yeah we're we're established in the western well becoming nationwide because i've traveled so much but we're established in this area 
um, for for plaster and okay. and things of that nature. Yeah, so yeah. we have a product called Armor Fill, and basically what it is, it's a <clears throat> level five product. Which a level five, typical level five drywall is a smooth drywall. You have to tape to level four, which is taping out much wider than normal. Many passes on the screws, and then you have to skim the entire wall out with drywall mud. Well, now you got to sand it. And you can either sand it with pneumatic sanders, electric sanders, or by hand. And it's very labor intensive, but it comes out smooth drywall. Okay. So now what we do is we take it to level four. Okay. Mop the walls down, get the dust off. We you're support, talking to drywallers, so they're no, they're going. We're know talking drywall, ta so they're, they're going to know what you're talking right. about. Right. We're getting to a level five with spray application. Okay. Okay. So you spray the first coat on. Okay. At, so wait, you take the wall to level level four. four. No sand or sand. Do you have to sand to get okay. the joints? But right. they, you know, you're not you're not skimming and sanding the whole wall. Okay. So you're you're sanding to get to level four. And okay. You want a good level four. Yep. But we're going to give an opportunity to fix that if you don't. So okay. you spray the first coat, let it dry, and then you Is go that back. A little bit bumpy on that first coat. It, it's something to sit got, on? Something for the second coat to sit on? No, not really. It, it really. self-levels on the wall, but okay. it's basically the same texture as if you were to spray and back roll paint with a, with a real tight roller. Okay. Okay, that's the texture. All right. So it's not like a smooth plaster fine, shiny. Fine, fine, stimple. It's not, kind of. yeah, very fine. I've never had it rejected as a level five. Okay. So we're going to spray the first coat, let it dry, and then we're going to take the same material and we're gonna patch anything that needs to be patched. Um, we used to do it with drywall mud, but then you see it on the second coat. Okay. And the reason um, I'm worried about seeing it is because we can tint this product. Okay. So it can use, be used as a finished product okay. and or a base for paint. And would you do another coat so, over the top? Yeah. So after we patch, <clears throat> then we do another coat, uh, a finished coat on it. Okay. And so we're two coats, okay. but you're spraying it 4,000 feet an hour per coat. So what Super the material's volume. more expensive. I love the volume application. Yeah. The material's more expensive than yeah. drywall mud, right? Okay. But you're... The production so yeah. intense that you surpass that. So you save ten to fifteen cents a foot, sometimes up to twenty cents a foot okay. over the traditional method. Okay, but you still have the cost of material, but the, it, it the, wipes out because of the cost of labor. What's the second coat look like as far as application? It did look just like the first coat. No, I mean uh, putting it on. What, what's no, the, we, we what's spray, the process? We spray that spray also with coats. an airless. Do you this spray is, it? This is for a level five. Do you spray it and trowel it off? The, that's another application. Okay. So this is for level five, for your typical level five. Okay. And then if you tint it, now you're putting another buck in your pocket because you just eliminated the painter. Right. And if you're a drywaller and the painter, you're just, you're just <laughs> you're making a lot more money. And then you can't scratch it with a nail or a quarter. It's an epoxy acrylic. So a regular level five... Okay. It's weak. It's drywall mud. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Without a sealer or anything, or without, yeah, yeah. without paint on. So now, this is a hard product, and it's epoxy acrylic. Okay. So there's virtually no patching at the end of the job. You just wipe Explain it off with a rag. Explain that to me, epoxy acrylic. When I think epoxy, I think like two-part. But epoxy acrylic, I assume, is it a two-part? No, it's a single part, but it's a water-based epoxy. So okay. So you just... It just has epoxy characteristics as it dries on the wall. Okay, and very hard. Very hard. And but I think I've you've shown me the the potential of patching is real patchable. Right, it's like patchable. Very, very you patchable. just change the tip size and what. And again, too, when you get into patching, people are like, "Oh, how patchable is your product?" Well. Anytime you start dealing with a multicolored product, it's going to become more difficult to patch. And you'll agree with me. It's like, you know, I mean, everybody touts their product as patchable. But the more monotone, this is my experience, the more monotone a finish is, the easier it will be to patch. And also lighter color. Right. Yeah. The darker color is a little tougher, yeah. but the lighter colors, you can blend so, them in. But if I good. wanted to, if I had a hole in the middle of my wall and I want to re-skim a wall, I can re-skim it. Seems like fairly efficiently with this product. Oh, yeah. Or re-spray it. Re-spray it. Yeah. You can okay. re-spray it. No problem. Okay. So, but then we've developed, since I'm a plasterer, right? I'm not going to just spray this this goop. Yeah. I want to trowel it too. Sure. So what I did is I, we came up with a, uh, you spray the first coat and trowel the second coat just with a wipe on wipe off like a Venetian. Yeah. And it Love looks it. like a diamond finish. Sure. Do you have it, a, a example of that back here? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a couple of them. So if you look at I like it, the matte feel to it as well. But it's smooth. It's smooth. It has a little bit of, uh, little bit of variance to it love it so you know so it's I like a diamond too, people 
people will look at the fresco harmony samples sometimes they'll be like ah there's not enough going on but what i've found is less is more you know what i mean right you get the busy plasters sometimes it's like too much this has like just enough if you did a room in this and i love the matte feel that this would be really comfortable room to be in you know right and you're putting it up for a buck fifty a foot and if you're a drywaller or a plaster you can sell that for five to eight bucks a foot i've seen it go for so okay so so now we have products you know they're okay. more expensive than drywall mud but there's an opportunity to make money okay and make it quickly because it goes so fast so we're just kind of blending drywall applications and plaster applications yep and and that's I what we're it. all about so I love it so we're giving we're giving plaster over drywall uh, that's durable yeah and it's it's a you know a new system you know you much like me are trying to create some diversity and interest in a in a static space where it's like man dude, enough with the texture and paint already and for what painters are getting nowadays it's like why aren't drywallers getting a cut of that you know right. that's my that's my like you know why are you leaving all that cheddar on the table man well, you know, then, yeah. it, just because of stubbornness, like there's these new systems that are emerging now where the drywall guy can double, triple their profit margin and stay on the job a short amount of time longer. You know? Still basically doing the same stuff. Same stuff. They're same just, just material. a different application, yeah. Yeah, so. with yours, they probably have to, but a lot of drywall guys know how to use spray. Yeah, they're spraying their texture on anyway. Same thing, Mark V, Greco Mark V. There you go. Sprays this stuff, sprays your texture. Okay. Same pump. See, there's the pitch. So, I mean, that's yeah. like, that's and then a you no-brainer. Could, and then you can splatter it. So you could do a splatter knockdown. You can trowel the second one, give Love it some it. texture. Love or you it. can do an orange peel. So you can do any of the drywall finishes with this product, but it's it can be tinted any color. Okay. And it's um, durable. And you guys have a color line currently. You've got like a color deck or a swatch. There, if somebody was interested, they there's could. Our, there's our color chart That's right the color there. chart. Okay, yeah. so like 40, around 40. Yeah. And um, you, and they can see, uh, people can get an uh, idea of your, those colors on a website? Yeah, I think, it's, I think that chart's on the website. It's, okay. But the, and what's, uh, the web, the what's the it's website? It's Armor Tone, A-R-M-O-U-R. -R tone one word dot com um, and you have that uh, domain yes good um very cool and you're distributed throughout the united states now yeah, and we're doing quite a bit up in canada we're doing yeah. some in toronto right now we're going to go do a demo in calgary canadians are assholes why no i'm joking love canadians <laughs> man they're awesome they invite you in their house yeah, and, yeah i think the last know, they, uh five take, six episodes of the drywall podcast have been canadians so. the only, the only problem, we love the canadians the only problem with canadians they'll hurt your liver They'll hurt your liver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they like to. They mm. like to have. A, well, they like cold. to have fun. It's cold up there. <laughs> it's cold up there. So but, they gotta have more. Uh, but, they gotta have more alcohol to keep them warm. But great people work. Yeah. They work hard. Yeah. You know, it's a neat. Yeah. I love going and, to Canada. And it's beautiful up there. Too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. It good. It's cold. I've been to Edmonton. <clears throat> yeah. Um, when it was you know 30, 40 below. Yeah, I went up to Toronto last year. Uh, CSR had their new opening in Barrie, and yeah, it just snow. Yeah, and they were like, "Oh yeah, it does this every day up here." And I was like, "God damn, it's cold. Am I going to be able to fly out tomorrow?" Yeah. You, oh yeah, you'll be fine. You pull into a restaurant or bar, and every vehicle out there is running. Yeah, <laughs> right, because they can't turn them off. Um, Danny Carrillo, Armor Tone finishes, author, uh, um, college graduate. Yeah, did you yeah, get your degree? I did. Kinda. Bachelor yeah. of Science. Bachelor of Science. Um, uh, Business owner, pilot. Wow, pretty cool. You know, I've, cool. I've been blessed. <laughs> yeah. I really have. Yeah, <laughs> but and, I'm not uh, afraid to try anything. So yeah, you yeah. Know, you um, a couple of questions. One I've been asking recently, and you don't do a lot of application, but something recently that has occurred to you or happened to you that has changed the way you do business or application like with the drywallers because they're stubborn i'm like have you what have you done recently where you have changed your system a little bit and you never thought that this would work but you change you've known about it for a long time and you finally tried this thing that's new 
and it just changed the way you do it. And it's way better and um, you, it opened up your mind. Well, it's how to apply it and how to patch in between, how to go fast, basically. To, well, just a little simple nuance of how to patch in between the coats. Okay. We used to patch with drywall mud, okay. and then that always leaves a little edge that you'll see, so I would have to go sand it and mop the wall again, Okay. and then it could still possibly flash if it's a color, okay. a dark color. So, so this said, was a hurdle in so your R&D that, yeah. that was tough to get over. So I says, why not just take mm -hmm. a, a, the same material? And patch with that. It, there's no aggregate. It feathers to zero. Okay. So I patch, and you can see the patches, but we're going to put another coat on it. Okay. And then another thing too is, uh, guys wanted washable walls, so we had an acrylic epoxy. Yeah. So let's throw our epoxy clear epoxy sealer over it. Okay. Now we have washable walls that suffice for FRP. And I don't know if you know how much FRP is, but it is expensive. Uh, you, it to 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 buy and to okay. hang for kitchens and swimming pools and okay. veterinary right. clinics, things okay. like that. It's expensive. All right. So now you're looking at it, it looks like a painted wall with a clear sealer on it, but you wash it with a hose. Okay. And so we, we figured that out. So That's cool. so we're helping contractors, you know, and, and owners give them something that looks cool okay. but still performs. Okay. And and we're always changing, you know, we're we're coming up with new things, putting adding new things to, to the products because you know we want to make it want to make it friendly for the contractor beautiful for the owner and let's all make some money love it um and a pearl of wisdom i ask everybody for a pearl of wisdom that you could bestow on the drywall community or the drywall plaster community as a whole well just in general if you do what you say you're gonna do show up on time call if you're not going to be there price is not an issue Okay. Because you're already leaps and bounds above the general contractor population. And try to get a third up front. <laughs> <laughs> try to get a third up front. Yeah, because you don't want because you don't want to be you don't want to you don't want to be uh, uh, you know ten years into your business and maybe they just withhold a million dollars from you. Uh, yeah. You do not want to be in that boat. That sucks when you can't fly Eesh, airplanes anymore. That would suck. <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's an expensive. You got to have a you have to have a business that has some volume in it to be able to fly airplanes because okay. it's not cheap. It's not cheap. It's not. Just to get your pilot's license and fly around a bit is expensive. That was cheap. They, had, was they cheap. had a deal here for at the community college when I, I got it when I was 40. Okay, but to fly, you're talking about like renting a plane, renting or flying from A to B. Or buying, renting or buying. Did you buy a plane? No, I just rented. You just rented? But, you know, I was, it was 210 bucks an hour. For when was I, it less expensive to rent a plane and fly it to you know San Antonio than to just take a commercial? So, if you put four people, it's cheaper, but people won't fly with me. No, I only got one eye. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting an airplane with you. I'd fly with you, buddy. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'd take a little buzz around Albuquerque. So, yeah, cool. I've taken some people, and, yeah. and but in general, people are like, nah, I think I'll stay. Cool. <laughs> you go fly. This has been a fantastic conversation. Good. Cool. I enjoy watching your podcast as well as... Oh, the, yeah. The Which episodes have you listened to? I've listened to a handful of them. Handful. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I'll recommend a couple. Um, yeah, the one with Buck Buchanan's interesting. Uh, you would enjoy the Myron Ferguson one and then the Kevin Bush. Yeah. You'd like those. Well, I'm, a, I'm on the road nationwide driving. Yeah. So I'm going to Florida at the end of this week. Yeah. So I, I'll, just start, I'll just start at the beginning and start listening to them. Yeah, even the ones in the beginning are pretty cool. I mean, they're they're a lot of fun. So yeah, yeah. Very, very nice talking Isn't with it, you. It's great. What you do for the industry is fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Shout out to Danny Carrillo for being with us on the Drywall Podcast today. What a great conversation. Thank you so much. And uh, looking forward to seeing where your company is in the future. Special thanks to Can-Am Tools for sponsoring the Drywall Podcast in the month of November. Can-Am Tools is celebrating 50 years of experience in their innovative semi-automatic tool system. Can-Am Tools has a comprehensive range of high-quality drywall tools for both professionals and enthusiasts. Head over to www.canamtool.com for more information 
and special promotions there. Guests of the Drywall Podcast will receive a sweet swag bucket from CSR just for being on the podcast. Shout out to CSR for that. Thank you so much for listening to the Drywall Podcast today. Tune in next Friday as we have Adam Luce of AAA Drywall out of Minneapolis, Minnesota on the podcast. Until then, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And remember, keep drywalling.